Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. This video is inspired by this paper called Theory and Practice of Modified Frequency Modulated Synthesis by Lazzarini and Timoney. I'll leave a link to this in the description below so you can check this out. So in this line here, I've coded a fairly standard FM synthesis equation. So I have the frequency of the carrier in radians per second here as OC, and I'm setting that here in hertz to be 110 hertz. And here I have the frequency of the modulator in radians per second, and in hertz that's also 110. And the index of modulation is A, and recall that frequency modulation, the way it's implemented on digital instruments, is really phase modulation. So that's why I have this here. Remember, I can convert from hertz to radians per second by multiplying by 2 pi. I'm using a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, and I'm creating a vector that's 10 seconds long. And I've set my index to go from 21 to 0 on a linear scale over the course of the sound. One thing I wanted to mention that I learned last time is that the sound SC command that I used to actually play the sound, well, you need to put a 16 here, otherwise it defaults to 8-bit sound. Anyway, as you listen to this, listen to the way that different harmonics fade in and out, giving it kind of a swirly sound. So if you look at these little bands here in the spectrogram, you can see the way the harmonics will fade out and then fade back in. It turns out that the sidebands in FM synthesis are controlled by the Bessel functions of the index of modulation, and those Bessel functions oscillate. So that's a characteristic sound of FM synthesis, and it's not a good thing or a bad thing, it's just a thing. But you might not want it. You might want something that has a more straightforward monotonic behavior. For instance, if we had sidebands controlled by the modified Bessel functions, that might be nice because those are in fact monotonic. So first what I'm going to do is to rewrite this FM line using an equivalent formula. So what's going on here? Well, first of all, let's talk about Euler's formula. You're used to things like decaying exponentials that are things like discharging capacitors, and you're used to expanding real exponentials that, say, represents population growth. But what happens if you put an imaginary component into an exponential? So here I'm writing j times t. j here is the square root of negative 1. Most people in the world use I, but I'm an electrical engineer, so I like to use J. Now, if you do a Taylor series expansion on this exponential, you can show that this is equal to cosine of T plus J times sine of T. So we really like to use complex exponentials in electrical engineering and actually in a lot of other places in math and physics because it allows us to compactly represent sinusoids in a way that lets us do manipulations where instead of dealing with trigonometric formulas, we can use algebra. So I can rewrite the cosine down here by writing it as a complex exponential and then just taking the real part. What I'm going to do is say, let's take my index of modulation and multiply it by minus j. So our index of modulation is now imaginary. Now, I put this minus here for a reason that will become clear later. It sounds the same if you put a plus here. But let's go ahead and listen to this. So the first thing to note is that you don't have that swirly effect because the harmonics are all monotonically decreasing, but everything's monotonically decreasing. There's sort of this exponential envelope, and this is also a little awkward. Let's look at what the max of this function is. Okay, that's pretty big. And the min? Yeah, so there's something out of balance here. This decaying envelope is very different than regular FM that has a constant envelope. 
So this paper I was reading suggests that we can multiply by an exponential function in order to try to normalize that envelope. So here, let's take the same thing, but multiply it by exponential minus the real index of modulation. And of course, in the formula, I still have the J. But here, I'm also rewriting things a little bit. I've taken the J and distributed it through. So I have a J here. And then this J times this J gives me a minus one, which cancels. So this business here is the same as this business here. I'm just rewriting it slightly. And I'm sticking this exponential function in front. OK, let's listen to that. So there you can hear the sound getting darker as the partials decay. And the envelope is overall more constant, but the use of that exponential is an approximation. You can see it goes wonky at the end here. So maybe that's something worth some additional research. Also, there's this DC offset that I don't like. So I think in practice, you would have to put some sort of DC blocking filter after this, like you do in some wave shaping applications. Now, whatever you're thinking about implementing this technique in might not have complex numbers built in, but have no fear. Watch this. I can take this expression and realize I have an exponential of a sum. So what I can do is I can split that into two exponentials where I'm multiplying them together. And then I can turn this into the real part of this first exponential times the real part of the second exponential. And the second exponential is already real, so I can just write that down here. And then taking the real part of this exponential gives me this cosine. So I now have this new way of writing it that doesn't have any complex numbers in it at all. And also note that for something called modified FM synthesis, where FM stands for frequency modulation, there's no explicit frequency modulation in here. And if you look at this, it looks like what you're doing is you're taking a sinusoid with a frequency of the modulator, and then you're wave shaping that through an exponential function to wind up with a structure that has a big DC component. And then when you're multiplying it by this cosine, you're doing double sideband amplitude modulation. So you're basically taking that DC component here and shifting it to land at the carrier and then shifting all the other sidebands along with it. Oh, and then we have this exponential here. So that gives an interesting way of interpreting what's going on. I would invite you to check out lecture 23 from my ECE 3084 signals and systems class on amplitude modulation to learn more. Anyway, let's try out some more examples. So now the frequency of modulation is twice the carrier frequency. And let's listen to the original standard FM first. OK, here's the modified FM version. That overall seemed a lot more mellow. Let me multiply my index of modulation by 3 just on a lark. Interestingly, that case had a much more constant envelope and also did not have a DC offset. OK, now I set the frequency of modulation to be half of the carrier frequency. And let's listen to original standard FM. OK, now let's listen to the modified FM version. That is so mellow. And if I take a look at it here, wow, that is doing something weird. OK, let me take the index of modulation and multiply it by 3, see if we can make it crazier. Hmm. 
Hmm, that doesn't sound crazy at all. How about if I multiply it by 30? Interesting. Okay, let's try something in harmonic. Here's original FM. Definitely has that swirly sound. And let's try the modified version. It's a lot less crazy sounding. Let me multiply that by, uh, let's try 10. Here's another enharmonic example. I'm doubling the modulation frequency. Here's original FM. Let's see what happens if I try the modified version. Let's see, what if I do this and I have, let's see, 55 times square root of two as my modulation frequency, here's original. And now here's the modified version. Let me multiply that by 10. So I just had a brainstorm. In those examples I just did, the linear decay for the regular FM seemed correct for the index of modulation. It sounded like a nice decay, but the linear decay for the modified FM sounds too slow. So let me try an exponential shape for the index of modulation. Oh, that feels better. Let's try this. And let's try this. And let's go back to trying some harmonic things. All right. Doubling that. And let's use half. I don't know what to make of most of this. Anyway, there it is, modified FM. I'll include my code in the description below so you can download this and play around with it and maybe try implementing this in other software. I forgot to mention that this is all MATLAB code, but I'm running it in Octave and I like to make sure stuff runs in Octave because Octave is free and MATLAB is a stupid amount of money. In order to make it work in Octave, you need this line here at the top to load the signal processing package.